because of your degree, but it was God's amazing grace. You thought it was the neighborhood you grew up in, the parents you were born to. None of that has anything to do with it. It's only because of God's amazing grace that we have another chance. We have another opportunity. We got the chance to get it right all over again. And it's only because of God's amazing grace. Let me tell you, he's given me a chance. If you won't testify, let me tell you, I wasn't good at all. I was torn up from the floor. Up. I was really messed up. I didn't deserve to live. I wasn't even fit to die. But God's amazing grace, 
I said his grace has given us another chance. His grace has brought us thus far. And it's only because of God's grace that we are who we are. We exist the way we exist. We woke up this morning and it was because of God's grace. Not because you're so cute. Not because you got the curves in the right places. It's only because of God's grace that we are who we are and we've done what we've done and we've accomplished what we have accomplished. It is because of God's grace. Let me call your attention to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 10. I want to thank the choir, the musicians, and all those for being right on target with both songs and it lift my message right from the page. Second Corinthians chapter 12, just one verse, verse number 10. In the New Testament, the book is Second Corinthians. The chapter is 12, verse number 10. When you found it, you will discover these words. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs in persecution, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I want to talk about strength and weakness. Strength and weakness. Let me pause to thank Pastor Brian Watson and thank also Reverend Ryan George for carrying on from this pulpit, for encouraging us all over the world who have made a difference. Let me also pause to thank Brother Whitlock and Brother Miles for carrying on in Bible study, presenting the uncompromising gospel of Jesus Christ. We have just set a record. This is the longest vacation we've ever had in our entire life. And I enjoyed every minute of it. Sister Henry thought I was gonna do the do drop in move, but I didn't even give her the pleasure. But it was refreshing, it was renewing, it was a real vacation. So thank you so much uh, for, for carrying on God's work in our absence. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 10 is a part of a larger pericope, which is found in verses number 7 through number 10. In November 10, 2019, I, I dealt with this in your presence, and I called it Power by Grace. When you, when you look at the text, when you look at the text, the Apostle Paul is talking, and he got some problems. And I dare tell you, report to you, that everybody in this room has some problem. See, I'm, I'm wise enough to know now that you, you either headed into problems or coming out of problems or you in problems right now. All of us, all of us in this room has some kind of thorn in our side. For some, it's sickness. For some, it is long-term illness. For some, it is coronavirus. For, for many, it is stupidity of Republicans and Democrats. We have some problems. I, I want to tell you, we can't decide whether to let babies live or die. And we cannot come to a conclusion that once we get a chance to let them live, whether we're going to put them on some kind of support system or not. We, get, we, can't come, we have not come to the conclusion whether marriages are sanctioned by a man and a woman or two women or two men. We just got problems. We, we really messed up. Even in the church, 50% of those who get married don't choose to stay married. We have some problems. Then we have men on one side saying, you know the Bible says you ought to obey me. Now, first of all, that's the wrong term to use for a sister. In the 21st century, they will recite, men will recite the words 
of Ephesians chapter 5, verses 23 through 25. And they will tell the woman, you ought to submit to me. Yeah. And women will tell men, you ought to love me as Christ loved the church. Yeah. But I think in the scope of things, we both forget verse number 20 and 21. Where it says that we ought to submit ourselves one to the other in the fear of God. You see, all of us got this little child locked up in us. And it doesn't matter if uh, we are full grown or semi grown. We have this little child locked up in us and every now and then the child want to have his or her way. Children, children throw temper tanders, so now the adults throw temper tanders. Uh, Miss Pelosi said it like this, I got grandchildren. I know when Trump's throwing a temper tantrum. It's because we just really want to have our way. And when a person gets to a point where they want to have their way, they don't care who it hurts. They don't care who pushed aside. They don't care who neglected. And they don't care about the promise they made. It's simply because we all have problems. And this message is not for somebody you left at home. It has to become personal to you. And in the midst of our problems, we have weaknesses. The Apostle Paul in verses number 7 through 10 says it like this. He says, because I had the tendency to become more than who I was or to think myself more than who I am, to, in order to keep me humble, in order for me not to be somebody I think I ought to be, it was given unto me a thorn in my side. He says that God allows the devil, Satan himself, to push me by using a thorn in my side in order to keep me on. The question today is, what is it about you that God is having to keep you humble? What is it about you that you're going through that the devil, the messenger from the Satan himself, has come to buffet you? What is it? What is it about you that you just can't get past go? You, you cannot get another spin. You can't get a chance in any direction. Just the other day, I thought, I thought, I, I told you then, if I ever was going to cuss, I had a good opportunity to cuss the other day. When men pull, pull electric wires uh, 200 feet out of the ground, over 2,800 pieces of, of cable out the ground, Brother Miles, I had a, I had a notion to cuss. But I realized that we all have problems. And as we go through our problems, as we move through our problems, somebody is watching us and somebody is looking to see how we handle our problems. You see, some of us, and Brother Miles brought it out in Sunday school, some of us only quote the scripture when it benefits us. Okay, let's pray all our food and have a scripture recited, Jesus wept. Now, what Jesus wept had to do with you eating food and thanking God for it, I don't know. But we're always looking for a shortcut. We're always looking for a way out. And let me tell you, some problems you're going through, you just got to go through the process. You, got, you have to go through the process, and everything you go through is a process. You can't usurp the authority. You can't usurp the process. You can't go around the process, but you ought to keep on moving in the process. The good thing about going through trouble is the fact that you are going through. And the songwriter would say it like this, Sister Hughes, trouble don't last always. We just have to make good, solid decisions in the trouble. We, we have to make decisions that are lifetime decisions and stop making temporary lifetime decisions. We want to make decisions to get it fixed right now. And if we can't get it fixed right now, God, I'm through with you. But the Apostle Paul says the, a messenger was sent from Satan and he was to buffet me so I won't be exalted above measure. He kept me humble. He kept me uh, looking up to God. And let me tell you, sometimes God wants us to look up to him. And God knows if he gives you that one thing you've been spending all your life praying for, will you, God knows that you will not give him credit. And you will not keep looking up to him. Will anybody keep looking up to him if God gives you what you want? 
Will you just keep telling God, God, I thank you for another day? Will you be content with what God is doing in your life? Will you go through the process? The process is a process that you have to go through. And you have to go through the process. He says, he gave me a thorn in my flesh. Came to buffet me and to keep me from being exalted above measure. And concerning this thing, Paul asked him three times, God, Take this thing away from me. Paul says he only asked three times. Well, I've been worrying God to death. I mean, I've been worrying God some. I mean, I, y'all say you, that you ought to bring it to the altar and leave it there. I left it there last time. I'm bringing it back the next time. You talking about praying to something happen. A heaven is being bombarded on my behalf because I'm staying before God. The problem with many Christians is that we don't stay before God and we expect God to fix it right now. But it's a process. It's a, it's, it's, we have to go through the process. We have to go through the process. When you get upset with folk, you go through the process. You get mad. You get despondent. You get violent. You, do the, you, you speak in tongues and you don't be talking to the Lord. It's because you're going through the process. And when you go through the process, many times the process hurts. When you go to a therapist, you go to a therapist, the therapist really knows how to put it on. And the therapist will tell you every time, this is really going to help you. Now, I, I agree, some therapists do just enough for you to come back next week. But they, they're going to tell you, I'm hurting you now in order for you to get better later. He says, I'm hurting you. She says, I'm hurting you. I know it hurts. Well, why do you keep hurting me? Why do you keep moving? Why do why you keep pushing? And, and why do you keep jabbing? And why do you keep punching? It's because in the long run, it's going to help you. The troubles we go through ought to help us. The, the, the things that we, we walk in, the things that, that we are weak in ought to give us strength. Pain from the death of a loved one. Pain from a child crawling up fool's heel. And I'm guilty. I'm, I'm guilty, brother. I, I, I'm guilty. I, I, my mama got spots in her faces now because I kept climbing up fool's heel. It's painful. But you have to go through the process. And as you go through the process, one part of the process is to talk to God about it. One of the most neglected benefits that we have in our lives is the fact that we will not pray. We won't talk to God about it. We want to we send a message. We want to send a message by way of, 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 of Facebook. You know, it's a terrible thing when you get on, on, you have to go to Facebook and say, you thought what you were doing was hurting me, but look what God has done. The Bible says, if you have a problem with the brother, go to him and face him off one-on-one. -on -one. And when you go to him one-on-one, -on -one, you have won a brother if you can settle that thing. Yeah, yeah. But we're not going through it. We're putting it on the world wide web. Yeah, right. So everybody can see it. Now I know. If I didn't know, now I know. You got an issue. Now I know you got an issue with somebody close to you. Now I know that somebody let you down that you depended on. First of all, you can't depend on people because people will let you down. I mean, your, your cousin them, they, they, they wanted to do it. And, and auntie mama them, they, they wanted to get it done. And, but they just totally forgot. Pookie them, they wanted to come to your rescue. But they had other things going on. Leroy and Tyrone, they were going on the other side of town when they should have been with you. Let me tell you, folk will let you down. So you have to depend on God through the process. Not only will folk let you down, they'll sell you out. Some people will sell out a 20-year friendship for $5. 20 years. Man, if you just wanted $5, I would have given you $10. You didn't have to sell me out like that. And let me tell you, I have been on, on, the, on the hook before, and my best friend sold me out. Maybe I should say, used to be my best friend. 
Sold me out. I mean, I mean, knew the circumstances and knew I was right, but sold me out. Let me tell you, God has allowed the devil to buffet us and put us in peculiar situations so we can grow from it. You know, I don't know much about hell. And you know why I don't know much about hell? Because while you spend an hour doing yours, I just get up and take a wet towel, wipe through it in the morning, and I'm on the road again. But there's one thing about hell, and most women will tell you, eight hours is not long enough to get it right. They will spend eight hours making sure it's right. And then when they get home, they want to sleep on the side of their face so they won't mess up their eight hour do. What they're saying is, there's a process to what I go through. And the good thing about it now, we got synthetic hair. We got human hair. We got fake hair, and we got weed, and, and we got twists, and we can do it any way we want to do it now. And guess what? There's still a process. And you have to be up for the process when you go to the chair. You have to know, you have to know, girl, I'm going to be here a while. I, I, I may not be able to use my phone while I'm laying over in this bowl. But the fact of the matter is, if you're going to achieve what your, your goal is, you got to go through the process. And as you go through the process, you come out looking and smelling and, and doing all the things. If you want streaks, they can give you streaks. If you, want, if you want your gray gone, they can take it out. But it's a process. We have to be willing to go through the process. Paul says that, that I pleaded with God. I pleaded with him three times that this will depart from me. And he said to me the same thing that Deacon Alpha just saying. My grace is sufficient. God I ain't talking to you about no grace right now. Great grace, God, you can give me that later. Right now, I want you to fix this thing. Right now, I'm hurting. Right now, I'm going through. God, I want you to fix it right now. And so we get this name it and claim it attitude. And let me just serve notice on it. You can name it and claim it all you want to. You better face your problems, face your fears, because you're going to have those fears until God changes things or you change things. And many times God can't change things because we won't change things. You got to face it. You know, talking about, I, I, I don't, I be gone. Talking about, I'm not going to receive that. You can't, you receive it. Let me tell you, every morning I have to get up and twist and turn and stretch and unwrap, unwold myself. And guess what? It's a process. Every morning, I got a 20-minute ritual that I go through. I, I walk and I put my arms behind me. Then I go to the doorpost and, and hold the top and stretch into the doorpost. And then I reach up to the sky on one side and then reach up to the... Are you with me? Anybody else got to unroll themselves in the morning? And guess what? I can't ignore it. It's going to be there. I guarantee you every morning it's going to be there. And I've asked the Lord 35 times to take it away. But if he gives me grace to wake up in the morning, the least I can do is reach toward heaven and say, Lord, I thank you. The least I can do is unroll myself every morning because his grace is sufficient. Paul said he asked him three times, poor Paul, he only asked three times, poor God, I've been worrying God big time. Every morning I get up before, before my feet hit the floor, I said, Lord, thank you for another day. And I expect when the left foot hit the floor, the right foot to go before the other. And guess what? Not every morning it moves so smoothly, brother. Some morning I have to spend 30 minutes unrolling myself. Some morning I have to spend 20 minutes unrolling myself. And then once I get to moving, once I get to moving, then things begin to happen. It's almost like somebody shoot WD-40 in my body and I'm all over again. I'm fixed. I'm on a roll. Young folk, if you can just pop up right now, just keep waking up in the morning. Just keep, keep saying good morning to the slop job. If you think you can just pop up 20 years from now, just keep moving. And the reason why some folks, some young folks ain't going to be able to pop up as good as I can because they're doing foolish stuff to their bodies now. And then when they look to pop up, it's going to be gone. Yeah. Loud music. You ask them a question. What you say? 15 years old. What you say? 
You ought to be 90 asking that question. It's a process. You have to take care of your body now because you're going to need it later. And there's no guarantee your children, your family members, your friends, your dog, your cronies going to be there to help you. You better look out for yourself now. It's a process. Eating right. Exercising. Getting plenty of sleep. And let me just stop here and tell you. If you've been trying to lose weight or trying to gain weight, and you've gone through the necessary processes, God made you beautifully and wondrously. Great is the handy works of God. Stop, stop putting yourself down because you can't look like everybody else. Because Instagram is usually shot in a place that's not owned by the person where they're shooting it. And you weren't around here trying to get what they have, trying to go where they go, trying to be. Let me tell you, folk always take a picture of an Eiffel Tower. I got an Eiffel, Eiffel Tower at my house. All I got to do is stand in front of it. And, and guess what? Boom, I'm in Paris. People paint pictures all the time. Young people, don't believe social media because social media will let you down. I mean, girls getting depressed because... They can't get the right shot. And when they get the right shot, they got all of these people that don't like it. You're making sure that you get the right number of likes when God is already in love with you. That's why I tell girls, don't, don't worry about boys talking about, girl, I love you so you ought to. Tell them that, tell them my pastor loves me and my God loves me and my parents love me. And if you don't love me, it's all right. And you need to make sure you get to a point when a dud walks away, you say goodbye. See ya. Didn't want to be with you anyway. You have to get to a point where we, where Paul says, Paul says that my, he says that God told him my grace is sufficient. And it's, a, it's sufficient for you. He says, he says that my grace is sufficient and my strength is made perfect in weakness. God, God can only have perfect strength in the midst of your weakness. As you yield yourself to God, as you turn it over to God, as you give it to God. The reason why some people own this hamster wheel like a hamster going round and round in a circle is because we have not yet yielded all unto the Lord. We sing that song. Church folk can sing some songs. Boy. Church folk can really pour out their heart in the midst of church. All on the altar. I leave it on the altar. Lord, all on the altar. I give it to you. Let me share with you. When you leave it on the altar, trust God with it. Many things we go through, we getting in God's way. Many things we helping God's blessing. Many times we are doing things that God would not have us to do. Stay out of God's way. He says, my strength is made perfect in weakness. He goes on to say to us today, Paul gets to a point, he says, therefore, I've come to a conclusion. He says, therefore, most gladly I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may reach unto me. In other words, when you're going through, celebrate God in the midst of it. When, when you're going through whatever you're going through, don't forget God. Don't leave him out. The problem with many people is that they are hallelujah. And there are some missing out the room today. You want me to call their name? No, there are some who are missing from the room today. And you can always tell when things are going well for them. You can always tell when things are hitting on the right cylinder. You can always tell when they really got it going on, they don't care about meeting God at the house. They start talking stuff like this. I don't have to be at church in order to honor God. Well, why did you come crawling to the altar when things were going bad for you? I mean, they can cry crack of our tears and they can plead with the pastor, the deacon, and the lay person when things are not going well. But since they're on cloud now, now, let me just tell you, just wait a few days. They'll be back. Just give it, it's the same people over and over again. It's not the ones that, that love him in spite of him. 
Because we want, and Brother, Brother Miles covered this, we want God to do it right now, do it right now, Lord. And if you don't do it right now, I'm done with you, God. And I want, I want it now. And let me tell you, Paul says it like this. Don't get connected with folk because you can do God's will better when you're just in touch and in tune with God. But we, we are a coexisting type of people. We believe that we need, and we need each other. But we, we think we need folk to walk with us. Let me tell you, when people are not walking according to God, let them go. When they're not doing it God's way, say bye. And when they try to influence you the wrong way, let them have their day. Because Big Mama would say every dog has a day and a good one has too. We have to understand that people should not influence us beyond the influence that God has for us. Paul says, Paul says, he said, I'm going to boast on God in the midst of my infirmities, in the midst of my weaknesses. And he says, so that God, so that Jesus Christ will be glorified. Our whole purpose on planet Earth is glorify God. See, you thought you were here to get married. Uh, have two children, three children, a picket fence, and a dog. <laughs> you thought you were born to sit in a house on a hill and, and with, 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 with a compound. You thought that's why you were here. Let me tell you why you're here. You are here that God will receive the glory. Receive the glory from what you do, from what you say, how you act, how you respond. It's the most miserable time you can ever have for a pastor when a, when a coffin comes down the aisle and you got some joker that never go to church. He comes up or she comes up. Oh, it should have been me. Uh, let me in there. Take me instead. I tell her I'm going to take every time. Open it up. <laughs> let them in. We who are Christians, we who are Christians, we who love the Lord, we know that the day is coming. You know mama got to leave here. You know daddy got to get out of here. And guess what? You got to get out of here too. It's a process. That's why the preacher says ashes to ashes, dust to dust, earth to earth. And they take three rows and put them on the casket and it's over. We know one day it's going to be over. People always ask me, how in the world... You preach your daddy's funeral when y'all were so close because I knew the day was coming. And let me just tell you, one day mama got to leave, leave out of here. And guess what? One day I'm going to have to leave. And it doesn't matter how young I am or how old she is. She may be sitting on the front row watching my casket. It doesn't matter because I'm here to glorify God. And once I'm finished glorifying God, I'm out of here. And the reason why God allows some people to be taken out is because they don't hold true to their promises. People say, you got a designated time. You do. But God controls it. God is in charge. God is the one at the hand. God is the one who keeps us. He says in verse 10, therefore I take pleasure. My first point is we have helped in the present. We have help in the present. He says, therefore, I take pleasure. This, this word pleasure in the original Greek means that I'm well content. He says, therefore, I take pleasure. This word pleasure means that I'm well pleased. This word pleasure means that, that I think well or I think good. The word pleasure, he says, that I have a new spiritual perspective. I have a supernatural perspective. And I have an amaline perspective. Paul says, Paul says, Paul says, I have help in the present. In other words, I have pleasure now. I am well content. I'm well pleased. I think well. I think good. I have a spiritual perspective. I have a supernatural perspective. And I have an humbling perspective. But let me just sort of notice the reason why Paul has these supernatural, spiritual, and these humbling perspectives is because God's grace is sufficient. If it had not been for God's grace, he would not have these perspectives. 
Folk need to stop walking around here talking about how spiritual they are, and then they cussing you out before you leave the parking lot. Folk like to talk about, I mean, there used to be a time where, where people would say, come to the Coliseum. He's passing out blessing and, and he's walking the floor like never before. If you put your confidence in a man, man will always let you down. People have left the church because they put too much confidence in the man that stood before them. Man will always say, I mean, he's walking the floor. But let me tell you, you don't have to go to a Coliseum to be blessed of the Lord. You know, I, I, I think I went to one concert years ago, and I discovered something. And this was in the 80s. One concert. I paid $30 in the 80s. Boy, you know that was hurting me, don't you? $30 for one two-hour concert. And all I had to do is go by the album, and I had every record he sung and more. I'm, I'm just trying to make sense. I mean, I mean, people, people spend their last dime. Uh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that 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 uh, J, Minister J. R. Richard invited us to the Astros game because I probably never would have gone. He got us in for free. He got us in because of his name. He got us in because of his fame. But guess what? We had to buy our own meal, and I took a picture. And I said, this is what a $30 meal looks like at the Astros game. <laughs> it was two flat hamburgers with no fixing. <laughs> two little small things of french fries. And then we had to get a drink on top of it. I took a picture. I said, this is what a $30 meal looks like. Thank God I got in free because I never would have gotten that meal that day. We have to get, look at things with a different perspective. People are wasting money all over the world so they can look good for other people to see them. I told you about the guy who got the wheels that turn when he stopped at the red light. His wheels just keep turning. It's, it's an illusion, right? It, it, it looks like his tires keep coming because his, his, uh, his hubcaps are just turning over and over again. And I told you, he bought those rims and hubcaps for me. Why you say God for you? He spent $1,800, $2,000 for hubcaps just so when he stops at the red light, I can see him turning. I know he bought them for me because he can't see them because he's sitting on the inside. People have crazy perspectives on what they ought to do in their lives. They buy stuff, and I just come to the conclusion, if you spend $2,000, you ought to have $200,000 in the bank. Hmm. If you spend $1,600 on something that you have, you ought to have $160 in the bank. We have to look at this thing from a different perspective, a spiritual perspective. And how does it glorify God? It doesn't glorify God if you can't pay your next month's rent. It doesn't glorify God if you got a doctor visit. Then you got to ask somebody else to pay your doctor visit. But I've come to the conclusion, Brother Whitlock, what people do is they they, they buy what they want and they beg for what they need. Because they know you're not going to turn them down on their medication. <laughs> so what you have to do is start a budget for them. Help them with their budget. and make, make, make sure they got their perspective in line. He says, therefore I take pleasure. I, I have contentment. Well, I'm well content. I'm well pleased. I think good. I think well. I have a spiritual perspective. Perspective. I have a supernatural perspective, and I have an humbling perspective. He says, I take pleasure in my infirmities. Infirmities means illness, my weakness. And he says, I take pleasure in it. And this pleasure that he takes in his, his weakness and his illness is both physical and spiritual. You see, some people have gotten to the point where they're so spiritual, they have forgotten about the natural. But when you look at Jesus and you look at God, they always look at the natural before they look at the spiritual. Because what we give to our church, what we give to the Lord in the natural is because we are spiritual. What we, chose not, we have chosen not to give is because of our lack of spirituality. 
And as we give unto the Lord, he gives back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Don't miss the last part, for it says that he will cause men to give unto you. God will cause other folks to bless you as you bless him. So it's a different perspective. He says, I have a different perspective in my infirmities, in my illness. Then he says, I have a different perspective in my reproaches. The word reproaches means my insults, my disappointments, my disapprovals, and my belittles. The word, the word in the Greek means to be belittled. It means to be insulted. It means to be disappointed and disapproved. You see, some people, even grown folk, cannot handle peer pressure. They can't handle peer pressure, and they can't handle pure pressure. Back in my day, they called it living with the Joneses and living like the Joneses. And whatever the Joneses do, then I have to do. My neighbor got a new car. I said, go on with your bad self. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb. I praise the Lord with you. Mine's going to ride till the tires fall off it. And if it doesn't have 300,000 yet, it, the tithe is not ready to give it up yet. We have to get to a point where we have influence from God and not influence from people. He says, in my affirmities, in my reproaches. See, some people can't count insults. God, God told me, man, you know, you're the only African. He didn't call it African-American, but I just put it that way. He said, you're the only African-American technician in all the instrument shop here. And then they closed it down. I said, not only am I the only one that started, I'm the only one that's been here, and now I'm the only one that will ever be here because they closed it down. And he said, man, they using you as a token. I said, it's all right, keep paying. I've been a token all my life. I, I, I grew up in the backwoods of Mississippi. I was glad to be a token. Call me what you want to. Call me out my name. You can call me any word. It doesn't believe me. It doesn't matter if you call it me a word with an A-Z, an N, or an O. It doesn't matter. Fact is, keep keeping the check coming. All right, all right, that's right, that's right. Then I moved from there, went to an engineering position. Got some in. How does it feel when you walk in the, in, the, in the conference room in Dallas, Texas, and you're the only one sitting in here with all of these white boys? I said, man, it makes me feel real good. <laughs> because every two weeks, I get a bankroll and ping and ping. Keep it pinging. That's all I care about. The benefits are good. The bankroll is good. Just keep it doing. Keep coming. It doesn't matter. You got to stop letting insults bother you. Paul says, Paul says that my reproaches, my insults, my disapproval, my disappointment, and them belittling me. Let me tell you, you can't make me any little than what I am. And if you do, thank you. God bless you. Real good at even a plenty. Because at the end of the day, I know who I am, I know whose I am, and because I know whose I am, God is continuing to bless me in spite of me. So call me a name. Do what you do. Look over me, belittle me, hallelujah to the Lamb. The God that I serve has beautifully and wondrously made me. Talk about my egg head. I'm all right with that. God made it that way. You have to understand, insults will come. Paul says, I've learned to have pleasure in my weaknesses, in my illness, in my reproaches, meaning my insults, my disappointments, my disapprovals, and my belittles. He says, I've learned to have pleasure, to be content, well content, and my content in my needs. This means my necessities, my necessities and my survival supply. I need some things. You need some things. You need some things to survive with. But I've learned to be content. Paul says, I've learned to be content in whatever way I, it is. I've learned to be a base, being, meaning to be made low. I've learned to abound, meaning to be brought up high. Let me have your mic, sister baby. I've learned to do whatever I need to do, when I need to do it, any way I need to do it, any time I need to do it, simply because I serve God who is blessing me. And we don't, we don't, it doesn't matter to us, it shouldn't matter to us how many insults we get, how many reproaches we get. It shouldn't matter to us how many things we go through because God is still blessing us. 
got to have a good perspective on your life. Know who you are. People who don't know who they are, guess what? They let anything bother them. I mean, everything gets on their nerves. They spend their time balled up in the fetal position. Oh, Paul, woe is me. Let me tell you, you can't get a job being woe is me. You can't get paid being woe is me. You can't make, meet a mate being woe is me. You cannot shelter yourself from the outside world. We need each other. And because we need each other, God will bless us. Our necessities, our survival supplies. Paul says, I've learned to have good pleasure. Then he says, through persecution. This is the suffering and humiliation for Christ's sake. Suffering and humiliation for Christ's sake. He says that I've learned how to suffer for Christ's sake. Now, I, I told you about the songwriter back home. The Reed brothers used to sing this song, and I said, man, I ain't doing that. He says, I want to be more like Jesus every day. I was with him so far. He says, I want to be more like Jesus every day. I want to be more like Jesus in every way. I want to walk like him. I want to talk like him. I want to live like him. And then I stop because he said they want to die like him. No, I don't want to die like him. I don't have to go through that process because he died for us. Let me tell you, some king sent 19 and 18 and 17 year old children off to war. Some president sent them off to war to die for them. But our king, King Jesus, he went off the war and he died for us. We don't have to die like him. We have to live for him. Paul says that we ought to live according to the transformation of our Holy Spirit as the Spirit anoints us and walk with us. Paul says, I've learned to have pleasure in distress, difficulties. This word distress means difficulties. It means narrow spaces. More whenever, whenever Batman and Robin got in a bad spot, the, the, the walls would be coming in on them. Y'all do know Batman, Batman and Robin, right? Okay. Okay, so Batman and Robin would get in a bad spot. They would, they would be in the Batmobile, and the walls start caving in on them. And, 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 and Robin would say to Batman, holy smoke, Batman, the walls are caving in. And then it would go to commercial. And when it came back on, Braylon, when it came back on, they had an escape plan. And the Lord had pulled them out. Let me tell you, when the walls are caving in on you, when you don't know where to go, you don't know where to turn, you don't know what the next step is, the walls are caving in on you. Call on God. He knows how to bring you out. He knows how to bring you out. In our distresses, in our narrow places, he knows how to bring us out. Then he says, oh, for Christ's sake, in our persecutions, in our narrow places, in our reproaches. The word weak means to be feeble. It means to fall sick. It means to become sick. It means a lack of strength. It means impotency. Yeah, the, words, the word weak means to be feeble, to fall sick, to become sick, to lack strength, to go through a period of impotency, impotency, meaning to have no power. And let me tell you, the situation we're in today, we are powerless. It doesn't matter if you got things going well for you or not, you are powerless. How many people know that at this point in your junction in your life, you are powerless? You, you, you don't know what it, you know, I would change this thing overnight. The songwriter back home would say it like this. Songwriter in the 80s would say it like this. He said, if this world was mine, he said, I will give you anything. If this world, Grace, you remember that song in the 80s, don't you? He says, if this world was mine. I, I give you, I give you anything. He said, girl, if this world was mine, I would take the whole globe and rearrange and change the times just for you. Let me tell you, the God we serve has the ability to rearrange things just for us. If he can stop the sun in the midst of the sky, he can change your little situation. If he can build a, a wall of water for the Israelites to walk through, he can change your situation. 
If he can put Daniel, allow Daniel to go in the lion's den, Daniel couldn't fight, but the lions couldn't bite, and then they purred like kittens because God can change your situation. Let me tell you, if God can, can take the three Hebrew boys and walk them through a hot, fiery furnace and they have a good time down there and then a fourth man shows up and the fourth man looks like the son of God, let me tell you, God can change your situation. God is strength in the midst of your weakness. God give us strength in the midst of your weakness. This, he makes us strong. This word strength means he makes us strong. He, he gives us might. He makes us powerful. And the impossible becomes possible through God himself. The impossible. A question to you today. Are you going through some impossible situations? Yeah. Some things where you've just gotten weak in. Some things that you're about to give up on. Hold your hold. Wait just a little while longer. Don't give up on God. Trust him with all you have. Because God has made a way for you. He's working behind the scene and you can't even see it. Yeah. It was so tragic. We, we drove up into Missis the Mississippi Delta and then we hear of two of my cousins getting killed. Execution style. Where they ambush you. You know, everybody got a gun now. Everybody. <laughs> they can't drive a car, but they got a gun. They can't buy liquor, but they can buy a gun. Everybody has a gun. So, so they go to get in their, their truck as truck drivers. And all of a sudden, you can tell they were running away. And God just execute them. And let me tell you what our world has gone through. Instead of people calling 911, they taking videos. And putting it on social media. They are moving. Putting it on social media so, so then the whole world can see it. There used to be a time that we, we hid stuff like that. There used to be a time that people weren't bold like that. But now everybody is so bold until the devil is on the rampage. But I stopped by to tell you, don't give up on God. Because God is fixing it and God will fix it. Don't give up on God. He made it possible over 2,000 years ago on a skull hill called Calvary. He gave his very best. You give God your very best because he gave his very best. On a skull hill called Calvary over 2,000 years ago, Jesus of Christ died, I tell you. He died on a borrowed tomb. He died on a, on a, on a, on a cross. They laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because it didn't need it too long. But out of that Thursday morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. That same Jesus has given us power. That same Jesus has made a way out of no way. And that same Jesus is coming back again. He's coming to get a church without a spot or wrinkle. That same Jesus Christ he is going to make our weaknesses strong. I ask Sister Britton and Order to come as the door of the church is open. And as she sing unto you, consider your weaknesses. Don't ignore them. Don't say they don't exist. Confront them. And make sure you understand real well that Jesus will make everything all right. The door is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus just as you are. Jesus the Christ. Come. The door is open. You are my strength. My, my, my. Strength like no You're right. One. You're right. You're right. The door is open. The door is open. Strength like no other. The door is open. Reach yes to me. God, you are my strength. God is. God is. Strength like no other. 
that you died for your for our sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. Why don't we thank God for who he is and what he's already done? We serve the awesome and the amazing God. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you for, for participating in our program, participating with the Lord today. We, we honor God. He is such an awesome and such a great God. He has blessed us again. And we thank God for the universal church being able to worship together, regardless of where we are and where we're located. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. When we thank God for who he is and what he's already done, we serve the awesome and the amazing God. It is now time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give unto the Lord. Hallelujah. It is time to give unto the Lord. We worship him today through giving. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. Please raise your hand 
You have two choices. One is a red and white envelope for a pastor's love offering, and the other one is a blue and white envelope for tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. Thank you so much for, for giving, and thank you so much for being a part of our service. If you want to give electronically, you can do so by Zelle. You can Zelle your gifts to lifting.jesus at yahoo.com lifting.jesus at yahoo.com the idea is as we lift jesus he draws all men unto us or you can mail in your offering or your gift to p.o box 503 missouri city texas 77459 that's p.o box 503 missouri city texas 77459 Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. Father God, we thank you, Father, for this privilege of giving. We thank you for your gifts and your blessings. We thank you for income, increase. We thank you, Father God, for who you are, for what you do. We ask you to bless every giver as we come to give unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. When we start on this side, if you would stand and follow first impressions from the rear to the front, bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. Ask this side to stand. Follow first impressions from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrifice of gifts. so much will you stand and say hello to us sister Donna Alexander thank you for so much for being here with us on today she's a guest of sister Betty Brown amen. amen we thank you for inviting her thank you so much for being a part and tell uh, Pastor Hartfield I said hello amen thank you so much for Hartfield thank you so much for being a part of our service on today amen Amen. Good to be back home. Amen. There's no place like home. Amen. I tell you, there's no place like home. And the best church on this side of heaven. Amen. Two people, two people, and I'll call their name. Two people wanted me to fill out membership cards today. Brother Dixon and Sister Henry, they wanted me to fill out membership cards uh, to, to get back in the church today. They said I have been gone so long. I sure do appreciate y'all carrying on while we've been gone. And then they tried to drag Sister Whitlock in on it. And I said, oh my goodness, man, my goodness. I mean, I'm getting attacks from everywhere. I didn't have none of these attacks on the road, amen. Amen. I had joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Joy, joy, joy down in my heart. Thank you so much for, for welcoming our guests who shared with us and who was a part of our service. Thank you so much for being kind to, to those men of God and also to uh, our men who, who taught uh, our Bible study. Thank you, gentlemen, for, for being men of God. I'm telling you, it's always good for, to be able to just walk away and come back, and things are better than they were when you left. Amen. Amen. So we, we are thankful, and, and we are, are privileged to have that kind of church. This is our prayer request list. We want to lift these families and, and these persons in prayer. As we look at them, we, we I want you to call their names. Call their names out during your prayer time and ask God to bless them. We just said that the God we serve, he knows everything. And because he knows everything, call their names out. And when you call their names out, ask God to fix it. And I also said to you that don't, don't just go to God one time, God. And the Bible said that woman just kept on knocking, kept on knocking, kept on knocking. 
And when she kept on knocking, she received what her request was. And that's just the attitude we ought to have. We ought to continue in prayer. So let's pray for these. Father God, we, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. God, we thank you for healing and touching power. God, we just said that you make the impossible possible. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless each one on our prayer list. Bless them, Father God, that they will see possibilities like never before. Bless them, Lord, that they will walk with you and trust you through their troubles, their sad times and bad times. Lord, I ask you, Father God, to bless every person right where they need. Turn their minds toward you and bless them and take great pleasure as they go through their afflictions, their reproaches, as they go through peer pressure. As they go through persecution and prosecution, we ask you to touch in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless us, Father God, to always call their names out before you, that you, Father God, will minister to them. We call it on you, for we know that you are the great physician, you are the lawyer, you are the detective, you are the one who heals us and keeps us. You are better, you are better like you're the one who makes us strong. You are the one who is omnipotent and all powerful and almighty. We ask you to bless now in the name of Jesus that they will stand again and glorify your name, praise you, and teach them to praise you in the midst of their troubles. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Amen. Thank the name of Jesus God. We have served. God and God has greatly served us on today. Now, Brittany, will you come back up and sing us out of here? Yeah, that song right there, what you got in your mind? Yeah. Come on back and sing that song. I'd like to say something too. Yes, ma'am. I'm excited to be back, and I'm telling you all, I get absolutely no words. I want to thank uh, Sister Hughes and the choir and Deacon Albert for keeping the music going. Because I promise you. It's the first time in how many years we've been here, and I'm totally free. Totally free. So thank you so much. Are you going to make the last announcement about the building for I'm going to do something with it. Amen. <laughs> Y'all feel Amen. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, in I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Let us stand, please. John 12 and 32. for this worship time together. God, we thank you for who you are, for what you do. God, we thank you for help in the present. We thank you for hope in the future. And we thank you for heaven in our view. Lord, Lord, we ask you to continue to walk with us. And bless us, Father God, that we will know for us, without a shadow of doubt that we are strong in our weakness. That you give us strength in our weaknesses. 
that you bless us in our weaknesses. For that, Lord, we say thank you. Now to him who is able to thank you, to keep us from falling, Lord, we thank you. Now to him who is able to walk with us and keep us, Lord, we thank you. Now to him who is able to create in us an everlasting flowing stream that will tell others about Jesus. Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us say, Amen. 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 God bless you and God keep you as our friend.